All right, everyone, let's do this. Go, 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 go. Welcome back. Joseph Kendo here. Today on the gun bench, we have the UBCS assault rifle, the Colt M4A1 that was issued as the primary weapon to soldiers who were contracted to serve in Umbrella's private infantry and is historically remembered for its unique role to help rescue citizens and contain the viral outbreak of Raccoon City. Now that we have it in our hands, let's take a look into the components that make up this tactical weapon and peer into the past of Umbrella's fallen military organization. From the beginning, the Umbrella Corporation has built its reputation as one of the leading heads of the pharmaceutical industry, following several prominent contributions to the field of medicine. However, their greatest scientific achievement remained outside the development of medical products, but was instead focused on a rather sinister agenda, being the creation of bioorganic weapons. The nature of this research was high stakes, as an accidental leak from one of their facilities could result in a dangerous outbreak and further expose their operations. As a result, drastic measures had to be taken to uphold Umbrella's image and keep their corrupt practices hidden from public view. So, they began the formation of their own paramilitary organization, known as the UBCS, which stands for the Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Service. This branch served as a battalion of armed mercenaries who were united to help contain the threat of bioorganic weapons that had escaped the confines of Umbrella's research facilities. As such, this endeavor proved to be a hazardous task which was characterized by a high mortality rate and required disposable troops who were willing to help conceal Umbrella's illegal activities. In response, they hired their recruits from various prisons across the globe by freeing convicted felons and war criminals in exchange for a new life under the corporate order of Umbrella. While most of these men had military experience, they would undergo intensive training to learn a new set of tactics and strategies for battling bioorganic weapons. Along with this, Umbrella went on to arm their troops with a versatile weapon that was suited to engage BOWs in a variety of situations. The platform selected was a first-generation Colt M4A1, a lightweight carbine that was publicly known as the U.S. Army's recently adopted service rifle. This model was recognized by its distinguishable features, such as its 14.5-inch barrel, collapsible fiber-light stock, and integrated Picatinny rail. But shortly after its adoption, this design underwent further development to expand its modularity beyond the limits of other weapons at the time. As a result, this led to the creation of the Knight's Armament Rail Interface System, which provided four additional Picatinny rails to mount tactical accessories. Mysteriously enough, this mounting system was adopted by the UBCS at the same time it debuted to the United States military, and the attachments they equipped included the Knight's Armament Vertical Foregrip, Rail Covers, and 300-meter backup iron sight, as well as a Harris 1A2 series bipod and a red dot sight, which was based on the millet speed point and one-piece mount. In turn, the design of this weapon offered a selection of specialized features that enabled it to serve numerous roles during the UBCS's most critical operation. By September 26, 1998, Umbrella had ordered for the complete mobilization of the UBCS and deployed 120 troops into the infected streets of Raccoon City. In response to the growing number of citizens who had shifted from their human state into zombies, by the time they arrived, the outbreak had reached an unimaginable scale that had now been spread citywide to a population of tens of thousands. This operation put the full force of the UBCS to the test by proving the efficacy of their training, equipment, and tactics in boots-on-the-ground combat. However, Umbrella had underestimated the contagion at hand, and the UBCS entered their mission tragically underprepared for the sudden onslaught that would arise. The UBCS assault rifle had its first appearance in the 1999 release of Resident Evil 3, Nemesis. When viewing the cinematic cutscenes, the UBCS soldiers are shown to be equipped with M4A1 assault rifles that appear in a standard configuration, although this isn't the case for the rest of the game. When you start on easy mode, Jill will obtain the assault rifle from the very beginning to give beginner players a fighting chance in their first experience of survival horror. But for those who select hard difficulty, Jill begins her last escape only equipped with her Samurai Edge and is quickly forced to flee the scene. As players progress through the city streets, sounds of automatic fire can be heard in the distance, 
and while Jill encounters several soldiers of the UBCS, all appear dead on sight, and their weapons are nowhere to be seen. Instead, players first encounter the assault rifle upon meeting UBCS mercenary, Carlos Oliveira, once he introduces himself to Jill and informs her of Umbrella's mission to rescue civilians in Raccoon City. Among your other brief run-ins with Carlos, the assault rifle will only be experienced by Jill secondhand, since it is not yet obtainable for this difficulty. As such, players won't get to test it out for themselves until they've progressed to St. Michael's Clock Tower and have finished their battle with Nemesis, which results in Jill falling under the T-Virus's infection. From here, players get to take on the role of Carlos during his mission to save Jill by acquiring a dose of the T-Virus vaccine. When playing in this role, Carlos enters the Raccoon General Hospital equipped with the assault rifle. By taking a look at its icon, it's quickly recognized to be presented in its fully modified configuration, and upon examination, its description reads, M4A1 Assault Rifle. The gun is set in auto mode. It uses 5.56 NATO rounds. Unlike other weapons in the game, it can be switched between auto and manual fire modes. When manual is selected, the rifle is shouldered while aiming, and against our expectations, it's not actually depicted as semi-automatic fire, but rather a three-round burst unlike the real-life function of the M4A1. As such, each burst would deplete the ammo gauge by 1%, which further suggests a hefty capacity of 300 rounds. However, this surplus doesn't last long when the assault rifle is switched to automatic, which enables the player to fire from the hip and unleash a deadly flood of bullets towards any enemy who stands in your way. At this point in the game, the assault rifle becomes the best choice to engage a variety of enemies in either close or long distance engagements. However, players may want to consider conserving this ammunition, since additional rounds for the M4A1 are only available in the easy mode difficulty. Here, the ammo is provided as individual magazines, and upon examination the description reads, 5.56mm NATO rounds, army bullets for the assault rifle, used for M4A1. Unfortunately, once players retrieve the vaccine and have given it to Jill, they will no longer be able to play as Carlos and have to give up this weapon. However, there are two other ways Jill can obtain the assault rifle for herself. If you continue the game and are able to defeat Nemesis in all seven encounters, you will be rewarded by receiving an umbrella supply case, which contains the assault rifle inside. Apart from this, once you've progressed and beaten the game, you will unlock the bonus mode, the Mercenaries, Operation Mad Jackal, which allows the players to select UBCS mercenaries Nikolai, Mikhail, and Carlos to put their battle skills to the test. In this mode, players are given the task of defusing a timed bomb by traversing the streets to reach the warehouse in Uptown Raccoon City. Along the way, players will be faced with various enemies, in which taking them down will help rack up currency for a higher payout. Upon completing this mission, players will receive their cash reward. And if you earn $2,000, the assault rifle can be unlocked for all difficulties in the main game. But in this case, the player won't need to worry about their ammunition reserve, since it will now be provided with infinite ammo to let players stand their ground and unleash an endless fury of rapid fire. Only a few years later, the UBCS assault rifle made its welcome return for Resident Evil Outbreak, as well as its sequel release in Outbreak File 2. Here, the assault rifle can only be obtained for three of the scenarios, which include Decisions Decisions, Underbelly, and End of the Road. Throughout exploration, the assault rifle is scarcely found in each of these environments and will be located in areas associated with the UBCS or the Raccoon City subway system. Once obtained, this model is presented as the M4A1 in its standard configuration, and upon examination, its description reads, a gun suited for rapid firing. It uses 5.56 caliber rounds. When equipped, the assault rifle is once again aimed from the hip, and it fires in automatic to quickly disperse shots in any direction you aim. As such, this weapon is particularly useful against fast-moving enemies. However, this comes at the expense of wasting a few rounds. Fortunately, there is more ammunition available in the game's environments, which is once again found in the form of magazines albeit with a realistic capacity of 30 rounds. While use with the assault rifle is often short-lived, it serves to be one of the deadliest weapons available, 
since its increased stopping power and high rate of fire grant players the leverage needed to survive the last scenarios of each game. Further down the line, the Umbrella Chronicles also revisited the events of Resident Evil 3, and as a result, the UBCS make their return during the chapter, Raccoon's Destruction. For this entry, when Jill encounters Carlos Oliveira, he's not actually equipped with an M4A1, but instead uses a submachine gun throughout the rest of the game. During this chapter, the UBCS assault rifle is nowhere to be seen, as if the developers had lost track and completely forgotten about its original appearance. However, the same cannot be said for the spin-off title of Operation Raccoon City, where members of the UBCS once again wield an assault rifle. And while it's modeled after the M4A1, any closer inspection would reveal an overall weak resemblance due to the strange set of furniture and attachments that greatly distance itself from the design of the original game. Over a decade after its first appearance, the UBCS assault rifle made its great return in Resident Evil 3 Remake. Just like the original game, if you start on assisted difficulty, the assault rifle will be available to Jill from the beginning of her survival. But for those who play on the normal or hardcore difficulty, the assault rifle will only appear in the hands of the UBCS mercenaries, and it will not become obtainable to Jill at any point moving forward. Once again, you will have to progress through the game's story until players switch roles to Carlos Oliveira. As expected, Carlos enters the scene with the assault rifle already equipped in his inventory, with the given name of CQBR Assault Rifle. When examined, its description reads, a 5.56 by 45 millimeter assault rifle, optimized by UBCS for this operation. Its short length affords great mobility, even in urban settings. The CQBR in Resident Evil 3 Remake is based on a real life design known as the Close Quarters Battle Receiver. As such, it's not actually a weapon itself, but is instead an upper receiver that was designed to shorten the overall length of the M4A1. As an accurate reflection, the model in-game features a Knight's Armament rail interface system, vertical foregrip, and QD flash hider, although it takes liberty to depict a barrel profile that appears longer than its real-life counterpart, which still constitutes itself as a short barrel carbine. When assembled, this receiver effectively converts the M4A1 into the modern-day Mark 18 Mod Zero. And as such, it comes equipped with the Close Quarters Defense rear sling mount and an L8A rear sight manufactured by LMT Defense. Apart from this, the CQBR can be upgraded to receive additional attachments found in-game, which starts with a red dot sight, recognized as an Aimpoint Comp M2, that's held onto the receiver with the use of a cantilever mount. Next. It can be upgraded with a finger groove tactical grip, which is identified as the Hogue Overmold Rubberized Grip. And to finish, its magazines can be cinched together for use in pairs, with the assistance of a first Samco magazine coupler. In game, the CQBR is shouldered when aiming down sights, and it's set to fire an automatic. However, if you have an interest in conserving ammo, you can budget your supply by lightly tapping the trigger to effectively control your fire into single shots or short bursts. In use, it utilizes the 556 full metal jacket rounds found in game, although its performance can be improved by acquiring the different attachments found within the environment. The red dot scope can be found inside the storage box located in the west office of the RPD, which is unlocked by using the star's ID card. With the scope attached, an illuminated reticle becomes projected on the game's heads-up display, which assists the player in landing accurate shots. Once players have arrived at the Spencer Memorial Hospital, the tactical grip can be obtained by safely jumping down from the second floor into the courtyard, and then taking an immediate right to search inside the empty pot. Once it's equipped, this grip provides improved handling by decreasing recoil for stable firing and automatic. By unlocking the safe located inside the nurse's station, Carlos is granted access to the dual magazine. When equipped, the weapon's reload speed is not actually affected, but it instead doubles the overall magazine capacity from 32 to 64 rounds, unlike the use of a real-life magazine coupler. With all attachments equipped, the CQBR serves as the best tool for Carlos to face against advanced BOWs, and is now capable of upholding the siege of the Spencer Memorial Hospital 
by providing tight bursts of rapid fire that penetrates into enemies, attempting to break into the barricaded lobby. Similar to the original title, an infinite ammo version of the CQBR can be unlocked in the item shop upon completion of the game for a total of 28,400 credit points. Once purchased, it can be found inside an item chest, which is seen sporting a full set of flat dark earth furniture. In use, it shares the same performance of the original CQBR, although it comes with the downside of not being able to accept any of the same attachments. Against our expectation, the CQBR also returned in the remake of Resident Evil 4. This came as a stark surprise, since an assault rifle had not been featured in the original game and was now placed under the rifle classification, which is chambered for the Dragonfly 223 rounds. For this appearance, the CQBR is first obtainable during Chapter 10 by returning to the cubic device puzzle found in the library. Once solved, its mechanism reveals its wall-mounted reward. Within this context, the CQBR appears as a simple plug-in weapon to help expand the game's selection of weaponry rather than having any intended link or relation to the UBCS. This becomes more evident upon viewing its now generic description, which reads, A fully automatic rifle. Its optimal barrel length balances power and weight to allow for accurate shooting. To this day, the UBCS assault rifle stands as one of the most iconic weapons of Resident Evil 3 due to its high-profile appearance, which embodied the action-packed approach of the game. At this point in the series, each entry had escalated the level of threat present on screen by increasing the number of enemies, which in turn demanded a fully automatic weapon capable of eliminating the larger crowds. While the UBCS had been equipped with state-of-the-art weaponry, this didn't provide them with a great enough advantage to contain the biological threat at hand, and when outnumbered, they faced severe casualties as their men were quickly overrun by an endless horde of zombies. By September 30, 1998, the UBCS had ultimately failed their mission, with the greater half of the population falling under infection of the virus. With all hope lost, the United States government ordered the launch of a missile strike on Raccoon City to completely eradicate all remnants of the virus and sterilize the threat from public domain. Following the aftermath of this incident, the UBCS was ultimately finished, and Umbrella did not seek to resurrect this division. In turn, their arsenal of equipment was permanently disbanded, and the UBCS assault rifle never saw its return to combat bioorganic weapons. So, that's it for the UBCS assault rifle, the tactical M4A1 that was utilized by the Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Service. Be sure to check out our Kendo Gun Shop merchandise. Our new line of t-shirt and sticker designs are now available. You can find the link to the shop down below. If you'd like to help the Kendo Gun Shop expand its business past Raccoon City, share the video with your friends to help spread the word, or feel free to leave us a tip over at our Patreon, link in the description. Make sure to leave us a comment on what guns from the series you'd like to see a video on next, and don't forget to come back and visit us at the Gun Shop for more content about the firearms of Resident Evil.